Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to talk about why machine learning and AI is way overhyped, and we're gonna dive into this a little bit from a math perspective or a quant perspective here. So for those of you new to the channel, uh, my channel talks all about quantitative finance, which is really just applying math, stats, and computer science to financial problems. Um, so let's just dive on in here real quick. The current state of AI and ML, one is interesting. I don't think it's groundbreaking. It's interesting. Um, it solves simple, easy problems. I mean, I use it to make reels for videos. It is great. It picks up faces. It picks up people. It cuts it in the right spots. Um, does a shoddy job at putting together text and words and concepts. I mean, the term quant uh, is not in its vocabulary, so it can't figure that out. Um, there are all kinds of issues with it, which is fine, but it's cool, right? It's an interesting tool. Um, it's Gen AI now, right? It's this whole thing. Um, but let me explain from a finance perspective on why this is just like a stepping stone, guys. There's still a ton of work to be done. Um, anyways, let me get into this real quick. So the way this works is let's just say you have a box here, right? You have some sort of box and we're just gonna call this um, a model. So this is the model. And this black box model here, which is obviously drawn so well, um, it just does things, right? Data comes in, data goes into this, um, and some sort of prediction comes out. So with Gen AI, you tell it that the data could be, you know, you give it some sort of prompt, you tell it to do something, and then it generates something. Okay, so let's pretend now this is going to be a stock market example. Um, let's say you tell it, um, I don't know, predict a portfolio uh, to invest in. And let's pretend because this is not possible, this will never be possible. Um, even with the advances of quantum computing, this is never going to be possible. Um, you're not going to be able to predict the future in investing, um, but we're going to assume um, the black box knows all. So this is the God model um, and it predicts everything and it's great and it's wonderful and it's this model and it is absolutely huge. This is what most of you don't realize. These models are absolutely huge. Now they have ways to implement this so that it's quicker and it's faster, but here's the secret, okay? In finance, speed is king. So if I tell everybody the answer to this um, problem here, I tell everyone the optimal solution given today what companies to buy, how much to invest in them, when to buy, when to sell, um, all this information. The real competition piece mostly in finance is speed, okay? So speed um, is king. Now, when you get into speed is king, um, I need to generate this model over here, but I need to do it faster. So the first thing I hear people say is, oh, you know, tech industry is going to solve this. It's going to be the tech industry. No, it's not going to be the tech industry, but tech industry is going to say um, hardware. They're going to say, you know, software changes and more rightfully so they might even say algorithms. And really what algorithms is, the things that's going to solve this problem is actually going to be math. Okay. Now, I know people are tired of hearing me talk about math. It's going to be math um, because you're going to have this, this complex box here and it's going to be too large. And the reality is you're never going to get a model that knows all ever, never, ever, ever. This is how finance works. Um, and you're going to need math though to simplify this equation and boil it down to something that's faster, that's better, that's more unique. And I think this is a critical aspect here that most people in quant finance understand. Those outside of it in the hard sciences don't tend to grasp this quite well. This point being is you don't have to be all inclusively correct. Um, you just need to be close enough. Um, this is kind of like thinking about measure, right? Measure when you're measuring something, there's always some magnitude of error that you are measuring to. Um, this is a scientific term, but essentially in finance, um, there's this trade-off between accuracy and speed. And if you can get to the market faster, if you can execute the model quicker, um, speed will actually outweigh accuracy and you don't actually have to be that accurate. So there's always this trade-off here. Now, finance is inherently competitive, especially in the United States, where you have capitalism thriving somewhat, 
mean, it's, we could be more capitalistic, but it's thriving somewhat. Um, we have exchanges which are kind of fair, but not really, but kind of fair. Um, and at the end of the day, companies are competing. They're going to invest a ton of time and money on figuring out um, how to optimize these sorts of models, these black box tools here. So even with ML right now, um, my team is working on research on the sense of how do I do things better? How do I make them faster? How do I make models smaller? Now I'm looking again at this trade off between accuracy and speed. And often we will sacrifice small amounts of accuracy to increase the speed and reduce the complexity. So speed often um, is an issue of complexity where higher complexity is slower speed. Um, again, lower complexity, meaning simpler things are going to be much faster here. So this is going to be the paradigm of AI and ML. This is where it's going to be heading. Um, the tech industry is going to follow suit. They will have to follow this. They will want to get there quickly. Um, they'll be doing it from a very different perspective here. Quant finance though tends to be very analytical, very driven. I'm sure there will be very spe special cases that will be solved by quant finance. There will be cases that quant finance does not care about that will be solved by the tech industries. But at the end of the day, you will see the those with very high level math skills, very great depth in mathematics uh, will be the ones that are solving these sorts of unique problems as the future comes. It's not going to be the person that's learning how to engineer prompts and tell the current existing models how to do something. Um, that's really a business person game. It's, you know, learning kind of the models, learning how to use them. That's fine. That's great. That could be a job in itself. And sure, it's going to get bigger and bigger. Um, but for quants and those interested in really in-depth interesting problems, um, the real money is going to lie in how do you make these things faster, quicker, and simpler. So anyways, those are my two cents. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you did find this helpful, please do like, share, and subscribe. It does help this channel out quite a bit. Uh, anyways, until next time.